Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. In this video, we're actually gonna sit down with Trevor from Sabbath Coffee. Uh, we're gonna do a little Zoom interview. I have a bunch of questions to ask him and we're just gonna see how that goes. <laughs> so please enjoy this conversation with Trevor from Sabbath Coffee. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> um, sorry about the whole technicality stuff. It's time zones. No one understands them. It's I fine. don't understand anything. Um, thank you so much for yeah, no problem. Chat with me. I'm uh, I'm really excited. I've been so curious ever since you've. I mean, you've been such a supporter of us, which I find boggling sometimes like why <laughs> but <What>? thank you <laughs> <laughs> why uh that's odd i mean no i mean you're welcome yes thank you so much it was it did mean so much and it does mean so much still to know somebody who's who i would see as you've made it and we'll get into that how yeah. if you feel if you feel that's you know what sure. like a good label or whatever but yeah. i'm looking at you on the outside going that guy's made it Mm -hmm. And the fact that you were coming on and coming on to that live that one time and just talking to me like a real human, I just yeah. really appreciated it. And it made me feel so welcome in a, in a community that I'm super new to. So who are you and how do you title yourself and what do you mm. do at your company? I'm Trevor Graham. Uh, my wife and I are the owners and operators of Sabbath Coffee Roasters in Clawson, Michigan. Um, title for me would be, what, hang on, let me see what's on my business. I just got business cards. Oh, which snap, is fancy. it's official. <laughs> it's official. Um, what is on here? Director of Coffee. So pristine director of coffee director is what coffee. they call me um <laughs> yeah I, I don't know i just i do whatever i'm an owner operator so i do a lot um my wife is also an owner and operator and she does even more than i do because she takes care of all of our little children as well while i'm out here doing the things children um, how many children do you have i have three we have oh we have God. three yeah <laughs> yeah that's I thought what it was I only the that. one because i just no. keep seeing the baby yeah that's the only one we can take photos of because the other two are too fast for us um oh, yeah we have three uh two toddlers one is four one is two and then we have a four month old uh baby so two boys and a girl um oh. they're our world beyond coffee they're everything to us we love them very very much and they're a lot yeah. of fun I'm going to ask you about that later. Um, please do, please do, because I, I am very much a dad at heart. I know I have a blonde mullet, but uh, I'm very much a dad, and I love being a dad, and I love being a husband. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of what I do. I do the coffee things. And what was your wife's name? Because I couldn't read it on your card. <laughs> my my chicken scratch. Uh, <laughs> I was like, Mir? So, Mir, I, yeah, Miranda is her full Miranda. name. I call her Mur. And Mur. I just assume, I assume everyone knows the nickname that I call her. So I, <laughs> yes, when the, you, I was watching the video and you're like, Mur or Mir, I was Mur. like, again, Trevor, you assume things. Uh, I'll like, I'll sign her name as Mur, Miranimal, and people will be like, who <laughs> is this person? Because I don't call her Miranda. I just call her Mur all the time. And uh, um, I I have a confession. So I yeah. think I kept calling you freaking Tyler for the. Long it's fine. Time. You know what you did, and I just went with it. I don't care. You know how many people call me Travis? Like it was growing up. So like my my family, um, my extended family is from the south. So uh -huh. like um, it was Travis. I'm sorry, I was by the Travis. way. Travis. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I took no offense to it because I'm just used to people calling me Travis. Our cleaning lady calls me Travis. I don't correct people. I just answer to it and I, whatever. I. Uh, yeah, you got the T vibe going on, I feel I like. got the T, yeah. Whatever. Tyler, you know, Travis. <laughs> yeah, I answer to whatever. Hey, you, whatever you feel like, I will just, I'll come call. I got yeah. Maggie a lot. I got Maggie a ton, so look, I'm it's, in that it's, boat with you. I don't, uh, yeah, I hold it against <laughs> no human. 
So anyway, I wanted to confess to that because I was like, wait, <laughs> it's all right. it's all wait right. I think I called him Tyler a lot. <laughs> uh, I, I anyway, um, it just shows how scatterbrained I am. I'm, I'm doing like two things, multiple things at once. But anyway, so um, could you break down your, I guess, career in coffee? Like, so how'd you yeah. start and how'd why'd start? you start? Uh, career in coffee was um, started in 2009 or 10. Oh, you've been uh, here for a minute. I've been here for a minute. Uh, well, this is like the extended, the, 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 the coming of age story of Trevor. So 2009, 2010, I started as a barista in college ah. for Caribou Coffee. Mm, mm, ah, mm. caribou coffee yes started as caribou coffee nice. uh just making very over aerated cappuccinos for everyone uh <laughs> which i still do to this day i love it um no one can take the caribou away from me but you can't take it out of me um <laughs> yeah so uh started in car with caribou coffee um worked there for a couple years and that's when I would say, like, right before that, I discovered I had my first like epiphany that coffee could be more than coffee. Um, I had drank coffee my entire life. I grew up, uh, my grandma, you know, growing up as a kid, I would have coffee at my grandma's house. Um, obviously, it was with cream and sugar, but coffee has always been a part of my life. It was a communal thing that I did with my grandma, um, you know, beyond just in college, taking it for fuel type of a thing um and then it progressed into something even more um but yeah so uh was a but what do you mean by that by what did you yeah. mean by that by being more than just coffee and you talked you talked about your yeah. so something more like deeper emotional for sure you? i think coffee for me is uh, pretty emotional um as it's not only just a beverage that fuels my day um but some of my best core memories are linchpinned around a cup of coffee. I met my wife over a cup of coffee, um, like literally saw her from across the room sipping on a cup of coffee. And I walked up to her and said, hey, do I know you? And like, yeah, I know, I get it. Um, and from there on, like, boom, there, coffee's been a part of my life. Some of my best friendships, they all around, like revolve around coffee in a way. Um, growing up in college, uh, my roommate at the time and I, who, who, my best man in my wedding were still very, very good friends. Um, actually, if you know the, uh, the channel, uh, virtual coffee lab, I think so. I've heard of he it. Does, yeah. Like a home virtual roasting coffee. thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. His son is, is, was my best man in my wedding. Oh um, yeah. An older gentleman. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mike. Yes. Um, He's so super his, detailed. Yes. He, well, that's their whole family. The Brinkers are very <laughs> detailed humans. Um, so we, we first found like, I think I want to say we tried Starbucks release like their first round of Tassis Yellow. And that was like this epiphany of, for us in a, as freshmen in college, we tried what? this Starbucks. It was a special lot that Starbucks released, like this like a is micro way, lot? yeah, I want to say, well, that's a micro lot of Starbucks can get, <laughs> but it was like a special, whatever. I can't even remember. I'd have to pull up the specs on it, but it was Tasi Cielo. And that was like the first time we sipped this coffee and we were like, whoa, coffee has this deep, different notes than like what the Dunkin' Donuts and floral, like, or um, Folgers that we were buying experienced and then it started like I think my first real true eye-opening experience with a cup of coffee was um studying at Caribou I got a French press of their Sumatra offering and when they brought it out to me the smell was overwhelming it was like the dankest smelling weed ever like it smelled <laughs> so dank uh I not there's whatever that wet, uh, so, that wet hold process it was, yeah, it was so <laughs> dank and skunked. Um, and then I like, I poured it into my mug. I took a sip and it was just like, I was, I was drinking mushroom soup. And to this oh. day, I can like, I can still feel it on my palate. And it was like this earthy, robust, just mm -hmm. mushroom filled cup. And I was like, this is amazing. Like what in the world? 
And uh, then it like, you know, obviously I remember my first uh, York Chef, I remember the Gucci's, all the floral fruities, and that's like a whole nother thing. Um, so then from there, wow, I really went off on a tangent. Um, you, I'm like a jackrabbit. You, you got to oh, keep totally me. I'm totally that way. All right. You got to keep me going because I'll just go. Um, so college, barista, and then um, I kind of got out of it and just became, I was a home brewer, right? I was the dork home brewer. Every piece of glass brewing equipment I could buy. Uh, I was always reading the forums. I was trying to brew the best V60 that I could. Yeah. I was trying to do all the Scott Rao stuff. I, just learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. And then uh, bugging my friends that had roasteries, I was that guy, um, mm. just like going and talking to people. And um, then when my wife and I got married in 2014, we got married pretty young and extremely broke. And so like How all old the were coffee, you? Uh, well, I wasn't, she, she was young. I'm okay. old, I'm an old, I'm a Cause fart. I got married in 2015. Okay, so I would have been, I would have been, um, uh, how old am I now? 30, 20, 22. <laughs> I was like 24. Okay, yeah, I'd call that young. Yeah, so I was like 24. <laughs> um, so like we were mildly young. She was much, she's a little younger than I am. Um, and we just like, we had just graduated from college, like literally the month before we got, I got, wow. we got married wow. and then, um, we just didn't have any money. We were really broke. And in order to keep fueling our coffee dates and the fancy co third, third wave, we did like tours mm -hmm. of all the third wave shops in the area. That was like our vacation. Actually, when we first got married was we would go to different coffee shops because we just envisioned like one day we would love to kind of have a coffee shop. We love that aspect. I love people. Miranda loves people. She's a lot more quiet than I am. Um, but like, I, we just love the aspect of a coffee shop and a uh, dream maybe one day would be to, to have this like a coffee shop. So we couldn't afford to go out and buy all the coffee that we wanted to. So early on in the, our marriage, we actually were gifted like three giant Folgers, ground, free ground Folgers. It was their, their daybreak blend or whatever, their light roast. And Miranda has a picture somewhere. I don't know where. But literally every morning before I go to work in uh, at the metal shop that I worked at, I would make a pour over of Folgers in my V60 and cry wow. tears because it wasn't like the specialty <laughs> coffee that I wanted. But and you it, weren't going to no waste it. <laughs> I wasn't going to waste it. Heck There's no. <laughs> no bloom. There was cardboard taste everywhere, but I drank it. Um, so we just were like, hey, let's try roasting coffee. I see everyone on these forums start home roasting. Well, let's try it. So that started home roasting. And uh, around the same time, one of my friends was doing it as well. So we kind of like pitched ideas off of each other. What machine did you have? <clears throat> Be more 1600 plus. Be more. Yeah, I was a Be more kid. We did do some stuff on like a whirly pop, mm -hmm. uh, but we kind of went, we just, we had like a little bit of change that I, saved and we threw it all at a more and we bought it they were a little cheaper during that time um yeah and we just started roasting in our apartment and we set off a bunch of smoke alarms our apartment <laughs> mates loved us very much um like all of our friends would be like oh you guys are roasting coffee you know your house and apartment probably smell amazing and if you like personally the smell mm. of roasting coffee is not it's something nostalgic for me, but I don't really think it's the greatest smell in the world. It yeah, I was surprised like to find burning that hair. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And, and people are like, wow, your house probably smells amazing. I'm like, no, it smells like I lit a cardboard box on fire. Like, <laughs> right. I don't know what you want. <laughs> sure, come on over. It stinks. Um, yeah. So from there, we uh, just uh, started roasting for ourselves and family. And they were like, hey maybe try selling it. And we were like, oh, that's kind of an interesting idea. So we started selling um, and we slowly worked our way from one B more to two B mores. And ah, we were like, yeah, we tried to I ran scale it. it up. We did, we tried to scale it up. I had a two B more system that would blow <laughs> all of the breakers in our garage when we oh, moved into yeah. our house all the time. So there was like a cycle that I had to rotate. Um, Wow. And then we <laughs> eventually running. moved up to a mill city. Um one kilo. Oh, okay. Yeah. You still have it? Uh we don't. We sold the mill city um close to my heart uh <laughs> over the summer. 
right? Yeah, this past summer. How long did um, that take you though? So you got you got one B more. Yeah. You started roasting. You started mm-hmm. selling. How long did that take? Till till so you upgraded the, to two. The B mores were like 2014 to 20. Miranda will probably correct me. 20, let's say 2016. Okay. So and then I want to say we got the probably half of 2016. Two years then. Yeah. Wow. No, a little longer because red was born. So we got the longer than that. 2017, the beginning of 2017, we we started looking for the one kilo. Ah. Yes, that this is making sense because we started ma- looking for the one kilo. We made the decision we wanted to, we had enough volume where it was like, okay, we got to do a little more. And we went with Mill City because full batch, like I could get a full one kilo out of it. Yeah. Um, we found a used one and it, it was technically it was a north roaster but mm-hmm, whatever mm-hmm. um so it was from that time period right um we found a used one we bought it that 2017 over the summer miranda was pregnant with redford we drove to minneapolis and did a uh, uh, mill city's training their phase one training oh, that's um cool yeah so we took like a little road trip we took a little, small vacation yeah, you're, you're in that area, so well, yeah, not really, but well, we're in Michigan, but it's more like than a me. <laughs> six or some hour drive. I don't know. It was fine, whatever. Yeah. She, yeah. So we drove, uh, did the training there, learned a lot, um, and then came back home. We got our roaster that fall. Yeah, because it came in in November. There's a bunch of delays, and then started roasting there, um, and from there was 2017 2018 2019 and then 2020 we opened up the shop on halloween of 20 yeah that's right i remember that you told me that and i was like oh my god that was so recent yeah yeah we've been uh just going for a little over a year now um so three three years on the mill city and then going like what was what was the one thing you were like bro we got to just go do the cafe what was that moment like i'm sure it was many moments but there was a lot of there was a lot of moments (laughs) um this whole time i was working in the auto industry um like everyone does in michigan we all work in the auto industry um if you're not doing something else you're working in the auto industry i heard they like um kind of like i don't know you're like shamed if you don't work in the auto industry I don't know if it's shamed. Actually, most people are like, oh, you made it out. Good for you. Uh, oh, really? Congr- <laughs> congratulations. Um, yeah, so I started, um, I, I graduated college with an English degree and a creative writing minor. So whoop de doo here I am. Um, and I didn't find a job. So I just got accepted at a local shop and I started working there as just like manual labor, grinding metal parts. Um, but my boss at the time was like, I think you're might be a little more intelligent than just doing this. And I was like, that's a mistake. So he then brought me into the office and I kind of like ran their quality. I worked my way up into basically being an engineer for that company. Um, yeah, yeah, it was really cool. It was a great experience. The whole time I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here, but now hindsight so much of what I learned from the auto industry and like during, during that time and the responsibility that was given to me by my, he was an awesome boss, um, helped me set up to run whatever we're doing right now. And there's talking like, about like operations and scaling and operations managing. and scaling and managing and like just understanding the stress aspect of it. Cause in that position, I was, there was a lot of stress. There was a lot of long hours to begin with. Like, it was not uncommon for me to work 85 hours, 90 hours a week. So we wanted to hopefully switch into this where I would be able to scale back my hours. Well, that hasn't really happened yet too much, but it's fine. Everything is fine. Uh, it's a different <laughs> type fine. of workload. Everything's fine. Um, yeah. So from there, I think the moment that kind of set us up was uh, Miranda was working for a company that was actually operating in this space up here above the shop Hmm. um it was a she's a graphic designer she does all of our branding all of our Ah, all of that stuff yeah Yeah, we're very fortunate she's crazy awesome it's she was working here and her boss was like hey you should talk to 
my friend who's a landlord. He wants to put a coffee shop in downstairs. So oh, that would have been nice. like 2018, I want to say. Um, and that eventually just turned into a really good friendship. And we kind of, for like three years, kind of planned out what this would kind of look like for a three shop downstairs. Yeah, it was about three years, I want to say, like two and a three half for sure. Um, I mean, the whole build itself took over a year to kind of like get it all from broke ground to finished and that there was a lot of hurdles in that whole thing too um on top of covid shutting everything down for multiple months at a time in 2020 um i think the biggest moment was uh we were already building everything out there was kind of rumors that we were gonna eventually the goal was december of 2020 we would start doing wholesale i would still mm -hmm. work at the shop making my our you know our salary but i would start kind of boosting everything up okay. through wholesale um but i think the biggest moment was when march 2020 hit and kind of covid took over 15 days to slow the spread i was literally one of the first people that was laid off from my job oh. um which you're you're thinking to yourself hey i have a salary position everything is safe we have health insurance um when that happened it was kind of like oh everything that i thought was safe and secure isn't so much safe and secure yeah and mm -hmm. miranda and i laid in bed one night and she also lost her job at the time uh because of everything and we were just like okay well let's just push for it and um. have an intention of going full bore everything we thought that was safe and secure wasn't so why don't we just go really stupid and try to mm -hmm. open up a coffee shop during a pandemic let's see what let's see what happens meanwhile all of our friends that have coffee shops they're like having to not have indoor seating everything blah 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 so like that was a whole thing we were able to kind of look on the outside and say yeah. okay how do we prepare ourselves to open up a coffee shop with all the restrictions, with everything going on and try to make it work for our family. Um, so that was kind of like the big, the big steps I would say to get us to where we are. Would you say you were backed into a corner? Probably Yeah. in a way. I mean, Miranda without, and I without, without pretty, that, would you have still done it? Pro we, probably not we would have tried to do wholesale first and then eventually scale to the shop. And I don't oh. think we would have been as successful. Um, to just do wholesale. So the decision yeah. to do full-blown cafe roastery, because that's yeah. like two businesses already, two separate businesses, right? A thousand percent. Yeah. I hear this all the time and I'm like, well, that's why I don't want to do a cafe. <laughs> but anyway, so you decided it's to do two. Tough. Yeah. And is that because for income sake? Because you want two revenue streams. Yeah, I, I think so. I think that was one. I think it was like we had nothing else. Mm. So w when we made the decision, there was no. We were uh, there was no prospect of me going back to my job. There was no prospect of Miranda being go allowed to go back to her job. Uh, I was laid off until. Uh, August I was brought back at the end of August for my position and when we came back I just told my boss I sat down with him I said hey just so you know I'm leaving and I'm leaving at the end of September and I'm opening up a coffee shop and he said cool go go do it and I was okay. like okay sweet <laughs> uh, so I think it was just out of like okay the the vision that we had was okay Trevor is going to operate the shop by himself he's going to roast for a little while we're going to save on labor we envisioned the space i had like a couple of numbers in mind that i thought the space would would do on a day-to-day -day basis we're in a popular spot but we're also not on like super like we have a busy street but it's not like not super super downtown mm. but a bunch of dominoes fell into place where the city that we're in literally by the time we opened up and established throughout this past year has like flipped around and has become like a really cool spot to come to Wow. tons of new restaurants like and we kind of feel like hey we are kind of a part of that tons of new restaurants some bakeries a distillery just opened up next to us and like 
there's you a didn't, you drive. didn't know that was going to happen you didn't see that we in knew planning? we knew the distillery was coming which okay. we always was like cool that's that's dope beyond city planning like we really didn't know there was like rumors that a couple of restaurants might come in but a lot of the land was kind of vacant at the time um we knew the the place would be we have a, a busy main road um our space is very very small so the approach was one i'm going to run the shop by myself i need to rethink everything especially yeah. right now when we were going to open michigan was still under pretty strict guidelines so people couldn't sit inside mm -hmm. all that stuff so me being by myself how am i going to operate an espresso machine to crank out drinks in a timely fan, uh, manner and do pour overs at the same time. Yeah. And that's when one night I just like woke up. I was like, uh, nope, we're not doing pour overs. I am not doing a pour over for the rest of my life. Ah. So you just we like, are, whoop. I cut it out. I don't, wow. I don't, we don't have them. Even when we do special micro lots, I don't do it. We have extremely dialed in batch brew that we have worked wicked, wicked hard on. We have, the special UFO 3D printed brew heads for our Curtis brewers. Like we have worked more on our batch brew than anything because we knew we were going to have customers who would come and be like, well, you're not doing pour overs. How are you a specialty shop? And that was literally the first six months of us being in business. If someone wanted a drip, yeah, we were like, here's a drip. And they're like, well, it's not a pour over. This can't be good. People would literally tell that to me. Oh, and I'm it, sure. I'm it was sure. a challenge to me where I'd be like, okay, <laughs> this one's on me. And I would slide it across the table. Wow. And it would be the, the best because they'd take a sip and be like, oh, that's, that's really good. This isn't a pour over. I'm like, no, it's not a pour over. It's called right. science. Like, <laughs> I got it. I got you guys. Okay. And so like now... <laughs> That's cool. It was just this, it was this really cool thing where we focus, we were able to focus on getting people in and out, not in yeah. like a transactionary thing, because what we pride ourselves on is being a place Sabbath, right? It's a place of rest. It's a place of pause. And every one of our staff members from day one, we've said, especially when we opened up, we may be that person's only interaction for the rest of the day because they're now doing virtual office. They're now doing all everything is now at home we're not allowed to see these people these people these people well guess what they came here to grab a quick coffee so let's make that interaction count and let's try to make everyone's moment special in a way and our team is just like taking it on to a whole new level we have amazing customers our team is amazing and we just try to be happy and we just try to be real and just when people I come in, yeah. you know, I we see just that. buy. I feel That's that. all it is. That's awesome. Um, congrats. Thanks. First and Thanks. foremost, I mean, wow, what a story. And then to, yeah. I really love that. Like to make, if, if this is the only spot that they see or they, that they visit, make that interaction count. Yeah, for sure. What an awesome. I also mission. worked at Apple. Um, in college. So I have a lot of Apple customer service things. And if, if Apple does one thing well, it's customer service. <laughs> and so uh, there's definitely a lot of things I've implemented on our team yeah. that are very much Apple related. Um, yeah, that's you know, awesome. Yeah. Um, so. I feel that. I mean, and I, and it's not like a direct thing. It's like, it's only when you pointed it out, it's just this very human, like, oh, I, I like this guy just from the get, Thanks. from the get, from even your, like, just, just reading something that you wrote to me. And I feel like if something that small is great, then just imagine having like a real life conversation with you. And then over a cup of coffee, like I'm drinking your coffee right now. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. So that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, and, and I could see how that's such a, it's a whole other skill to like hone um, yeah. in the cafe world versus just being a roaster where I can be my quiet little self. Yeah. <laughs> there's, here, definitely, <laughs> there's definitely days where it's like, I'm not ready to mentally run the register for six hours, you know, right? like the, uh, the we, just the, the psychology yeah, it's of that. The psychology of it, but I, our team does one thing really well and everyone we've pretty much had a lot of the same staff since day one and we mm. all can feel each other's temperatures. We're like, 
it's the most cliche (laughs) yeah it's a cliche thing we're a family but we really have become we hate each other sometimes and we love each other a lot of the times and then we want to punch each other sometimes so (laughs) but everyone's really cool with like temperature checking if someone's vibes like not not straight we all try to like kind of pick up because we all, mm. I've said it from day one, we're all human. Not all of us are going to, we're not going to be on a hundred percent every day. But the one thing with me, I try not to take this for granted is because I hated my life in the auto industry. I hated almost every second of it. I hated my job. I hated all of it. Uh, yeah. It paid the bills and it allowed Miranda and I to do a lot of, a lot of like advance our family more than we ever could imagine. But I hated it. I missed yeah. interacting with people. The people that I had to interact with were good humans, but they hated their life too. And everyone just hated each other. And I, the one thing Miranda and I wanted to do with Sabbath was we would hope people when they would walk in, find a moment of just like a little bit of enjoyment because I, I knew what those people for the most part were going through when they would come in and get their morning coffee. Most yeah of the people are dreading going into their job. And with that in the mind frame, we always talk about it on, on our team is just like, Hey, just remember most of the time, if someone's upset, they probably just hate where they are in their day. And how can we somehow make that interaction flip around, you know, and uh, our team does a really good job with that. So that's, awesome. that's a, you know, compassion. <laughs> yeah. I think Compassion that's a great for, for sure. Um, okay, so let's switch gears a little. Yeah, bit. let's talk something else. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I I love how emotional uh, coffee can get. But um, you guys started this cafe roastery. What yep. were the financial strategies coming in? How did you make that happen? Was it a loan? Was it a I saved up forever? You guys had this vision mm-hmm. coming for kind of a long time coming since you. Since you yeah, know, right? I mean, we had done a lot of saving and a lot of planning. Mm-hmm. We're very nimble mm-hmm. um, in the way of if there's nimble one thing we can frugal. And sometimes, mm-hmm. and when we want to be, we can be frugal. Okay. Okay. When we have a goal, we are frugal. Um, mm-hmm. But I will tell you, we can definitely throw down a Chipotle real quick for multiple days in a row. Um, uh-huh. So. Uh, prime days of Chipotle were king. Um, <laughs> but I think the one thing is I'm always, it's kind of been ingrained with me as uh, growing up was never to rack up debt. My parents were very strict about it. It was like, do not get a credit card. Do not get debt. Don't do this. The only debt you should ever have is your home. And then if you have school, school debt, you know, um, and which I did when I graduated college, I had $32,000 in student loans. Ooh. And yeah. School, um, which is like a drop in the bucket to some of my friends. But for me, for as sure. an English major, $30,000 ain't cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, when you, you know, Miranda didn't have any. So I was the guilty one, you know, Aww. whatever I was weighing. I was weighing the family down. You know, we, we set our goals of like, yeah, we want to have a house. We want to get out of the apartment. And we never had a credit card. Um, I grew up, my dad is a mechanic and a master tradesman. Um, And he taught me how to use a wrench. Sometimes I do it well, sometimes I don't. Uh, But the one thing he instilled with me was don't be afraid to try. Mm -hmm. And so all the equipment in our shop was bought used. Um, The only thing that was not bought used was our frozen latte machine and our Curtis Brewer. Everything else was bought used and repaired and refurbished. So like our Slayer bought it used for 75% what it should have been new. And that's cool yeah yeah that's awesome so like I'm a big proponent one food margins are never good like going into some type of food product the margins that you gain yeah aren't great in a lot of aspects you're running and especially right now like the cost has gone up from when we first opened like it's traumatic sometimes to see the increases that we have to pay but it's a cost like it's fine we you we you get through it right Mm-hmm. but um so anyway i can cut cost i get it so like that compact right there it was used guess what and Just, you're an engineer like you're a mechanic 
I'm loosely a mechanic. Uh, my dad is a true mechanic. I just, I go, I do the things. And then when it breaks, I go, hey, dad, what, what would you do in this situation? That's what I did do. Hey, dad. Yeah, he would go, don't do what you just did. Dummy. Right. And I'm like, like yeah, damn. okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like one, I'm always on eBay trying to find used things that I can just mm. throw new burrs in, um, you know, whatever, new gaskets, whatever, make it work until it breaks. And then mm -hmm. hopefully you have enough money, maybe buy new one day. Um, but like our, from a financial thing was we knew, uh, especially once we talked to uh, the, the landlord of this, who's now our friend, obviously, he's like the same age as us. He's a very cool dude. One of the nicest people you ever meet. Um, when we decided, hey, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a shop in here. Mm -hmm. I still had $27,000 in student loan debt because I was wow. just paying the minimum, right? Yeah. And, um, oh boy. We're like, hey, if we're gonna do this, we have to be able to financially be nimble in our lives and not carry this extra whatever payment. So uh, as I was working the long hours in the auto industry, I picked up a second job and a third job. And yeah. for multiple months, we had a goal of we are literally eating rice and beans until we we pay off the student loans. Hey. And we didn't do, we didn't go out. We didn't do anything. We hung out at home. We wanted to hang out with friends. We didn't go and buy dinner. It was, we, we, oh, every right, baby, you had died. babies too, right? We had babies. That was fine. Diapers, they are not cheap, but like, oh, it was just one of those things. I mean, we just worked it through and it over the course of from November, it's like seven months, we paid off 20, 20 some thousand dollars in student, student debt. We just, we, all we did was we focused on that because we knew the end goal was to open this and we, oh. that, that was the goal. So I never stopped working. Miranda never stopped working. any side jobs we could. I was just Good left for left, you right? guys, man. That's so, um, that's so quick. Is you know, that what it, you mean by nimble? No, I think just being malleable. Like, um, if, you know, if we still carried a bunch of debt and a big problem arose financially, how am I going to be able to pay if I wasn't actually going to pay myself from the business? Like what if the business couldn't afford me one, one week, which it happens It's small business, right? What happens if our revenue is not great one month and I can't afford a check? What? And I still have all these bills to pay, you know? Yeah. So it was just one, when we did it, we also sat back and we're like, wow, look at how much money we have been wasting. Uh, mm -hmm. which then set us forth on like our kind of our marriage of like restructuring finances and making sure like we kind of have a, a better budget and, and just like understanding. You, you have that, that talk. <laughs> yeah, we had the budget talk. Um, the budget talk, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and especially with kids, it's like, it's a thing, right? I mean, you got to yeah. just, there's more things, hospital bills and everything. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so we just, we bought a lot of things used. Um, our landlord was very, very gracious when building this out. And he took on a lot of the build out costs because there was so much oh, wow. to bring it up to date. Yeah, um, he did that. That's cool. Yeah, he is How super nice cool because orig originally we were supposed to have the building next door, yeah. uh, which he also owned. And he was like, uh, we were drawing up plans for it. He's like, we're scrapping all of this. Um, I'm actually knocking this building down and I'm going to put in the distillery that I want to put in because I need mm. this space. And you guys are going to take this this little thing. And we're like, oh, oh, okay. And he's like, but don't worry because we're going to white box it. And so like, it was one of those things where we kind of came up with a little agreement for that. Because what we does white, both... white box mean? White box is like when the landlord will go in and basically pay to like get it all new drywall, white paint, fresh coat, everything uh, to get it up the code basically. Okay, um, okay. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This was also during a different financial time of like right now we're, we've been trying to find a warehouse for months to move our roasting facility into. And it's just, the retail is insane. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that helped us out a lot um, was having that ability to where we didn't have to accrue so much cost into that. Mm. Um, but we could also then pay back some things to, to him as well as the landlord. So it was like a mutual, we had a good relationship. We still have a very good relationship with him. Um, like I said, very good friend of mine now. Um, so awesome. yeah, and it, it was just like finding deals even when they hurt. Um, 
like our roaster we oh yeah yeah yeah. our roaster (laughs) frankenstein roasty mcroaster face um we (laughs) found a deal that hurt a little bit which i knew it was gonna hurt but it was like one of those things you're like originally um this was advice for my landlord because he's had businesses that have been successful and stuff uh originally i was like i'm just gonna get like a a a two kilo and we'll roast on a two kilo everything will be fine and he's like, no, you shouldn't do that. Like how, how much pound, what is that? And like, he knew nothing about copper. I'm like telling him, well, if I, I roast this many hours, he's like, that's stupid. You should get the biggest thing you can find. And I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? He's like, bigger is always better, bro. And I was like, no, 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 no. I want to, I've never roasted on anything that big. I think a six kilo or a two kilo will be perfect. You know, yeah. I'll be able to like, I'm going from a one kilo. I don't want to make that jump. Yeah. And so he like, one day he just decided he was looking at roasters and he found a used 12 kilo uh roaster. Oh, he helped you out too in the research yeah yeah <laughs> and he's like what about this one i'm like again it is too big i don't want this and he's like yeah but it's a killer deal yeah. and i was like it is it is definitely a killer deal something that was like very much probably again looking at like mill cities like what they're 12 because that's what i really wanted with a new mill city yeah for sure. um looking at like that cost it was easily two-thirds less than that and wow. so i was like okay well let's go take a look at it so we were about ready to drive up there and um the landlord messaged me back he's like hey i messaged the manufacturer for you of this roaster and it's in turkey and i was like oh okay oh. he's like you can you can get some more information on it i was like cool he's like also they said they would sell it sell you a new one for the same price as that used one and i was like wait what and he was like yeah freighting and everything so he sends me over the email and we kind of pulled the trigger on it without doing too much research and as I after like I pulled the trigger on it I started looking on forums about the the company and there was not much good things being said about it so then there was like this panic of like oh my gosh what did I just do uh crap because literally we got it in yeah and when we first uncrated it it was like oh cool this is great it's big it's a single wall whatever it'll be cool it's it looks like a san franciscan you know and i i rose on double wall so we already knew there was going to be a little change um but when we got it it was just in a little storage unit we had because the the building was still being built out so there's no way for me to test any of it right oh dang so we finally (laughs) get it installed like two months before we open yeah and I start practice roasting on this thing (sighs) it was not good it was not good there was a lot of things wrong with it so on like the actual face yeah of it the probe was actually in almost the center of the drum so it actually never touched the bean bed so it was still it was just like a uh, environmental temp I had two right. environmental temp probes happening <laughs> and I'm like oh this is not good this is not good and at the same time it was supposed to be able to communicate with artisan very well which I'm an artisan guy I've used it I love artisan I love free software so uh, <laughs> but the Modbus communication was not working properly and I couldn't get the manufacturer to un- like we had a couple of calls very early on it was like okay he's different than the forums this is different we're okay and we had a couple of conversations we did some things and then it wouldn't work and then it was like ghost town just oh, ghost town oh. and i was like oh my gosh what am i going to do cuz we're going to open up in a month and i i have a roaster that i can't roast coffee on i was literally using sight sound smell which is fine but when you're when you're dealing with you know, a 15 pound or an 18 pound batch, I would rather have a little data, especially never having roasted on it, just a little, just a little, because the probes that were, what the temperatures they were telling me, I was having to flip Celsius math around in my brain. And they were off by like 20 degrees for sure. Easily 20 (laughs) degrees. Oh my God luckily through some circumstance we actually there was a roaster um like restoration company 
randomly we heard about and one of their techs was in Michigan wow. and I got a hold of him Lucky. and got him here and that developed a friendship with Nicholas from this company he's now working for Sabda uh so he's super intellectual this guy we cracked open like a few cases of beer and over a couple of nights we re we created well he did I'm not smart enough for this he made this huge calculus uh, equation I'll have to send you a picture of it that we plugged into like you know an artisan where you get you do like the xy algebraic thing yeah well we realized the mod bus was taking I'm going to say this all wrong basically taking celsius turning it to fahrenheit at the wrong temperature cur- converting it back to celsius and then spitting it out into artisan and in order to fix it he figured out this trajectory calculus thing that when he oh, found crap. like the bell curve after we wasted so much coffee, I mean, oh. hundreds of pounds of coffee. Oh, wow. uh, you know, I was keeping genuine origin much afloat during that time. I was buying like <laughs> some of the cheapest yeah. things I could find and just burning it. Um, <laughs> so Great. we figured it out. We got that. We readjusted the probes. And anyways, it is now running and we have this thing pretty much dialed in between the me custom and my roaster. roaster. <laughs> yeah. So Roast the McRoaster face is fully operational like the Death Star. And That's why you big. call it Frankenstein. Yeah. It's a, there's a lot of love that has gone into him and I'll never get rid of him. Oh we may add gosh. another, we may add a big mill city in the future, but yeah. I will never get rid of him because he's a sweetie. Oh, that's cool, dude. Mm-hmm. What'd you say? It was six six K or twelve K? This is a twelve K. So we can wow. do and it the cool thing with it is the one thing they did really nice on this is the actual burner tray, the BTUs, is way more than it actually needs. Like <laughs> mega. It has so much extra power in it, it's stupid. And the drum is actually rock really large. <laughs> yes. So I can actually do like 21 pounds easy and hit like an eight minute first crack if i want wow yeah so <laughs> it, it's pretty quick if you're not careful it, it like she cruises she cruises she's like a ferrari but it looks like a pinto like it's not it, it looks like that's like the yeah. ragtag team's you know spaceship you know it's a hunk yeah. of junk but it exactly flies. it's a millennium falcon basically <laughs> it's a millennium it looks falcon. like it looks like crap but it can do the kessel run yeah you know under 12 parsecs so oh, that's funny yeah um, so yeah that's cool that's really cool to hear um calculus oh lord that scares me so what were yeah, your biggest what was the biggest fear i guess i'm sure there were plenty but yeah. what was the biggest one when you started besides the pandemic? I mean, yeah. you know, that besides all there. the other yeah, like that and, one, yeah. we, we're going to call that everybody's fear. Uh, I would say like why? So you must've had a fear holding you back. Why you didn't, you had to be pushed into a corner to start this new business. Right. So what was the yeah. fear of actually starting? I, beyond I'm going to say everyone's going to be like well the family right you support your family I'll leave that one that's everyone's fear right well um, I, I think that's valid just and I wanted to get your take because yeah. we have three right and then Kevin yeah. and I we were like bro the biggest reason why we don't want to have kids is because we're such we're so yeah. in love with business you know and, and that it would take away from our love from business or whatever it is and, and so we've landed on not having kids and that's why sure. I, like, I that's why I was so interested to talk to you besides all the business stuff that I do want to ask you is like, yeah. where, where did um, the family thing take place? It seems like it's not an issue. So yeah, I would, <laughs> I would love to hear. <laughs> sure. I'll I'm try to keep, I know I, sometimes I ramble, so I'm going to keep on, I'm going to be really conscious of trying to like focus in. Um, so with the family, yeah, that's always been a big thing. Uh, I was raised by multiple men in our family grandparents you know grandpa's dads like the most the most male role models you could and that's not like toxic masculinity it was just like we work really hard and we are going to work hard to supply food for our family and a roof over their head and that's what you do as the man that was just like ingrained not even just like verbalized i just saw it everywhere in my family so i had amazing compassionate male role models in my life 
So my whole life has been like set up, especially, okay, I get a family, my, I have to supply for them, you know, and uh, I need to provide for them. I need to make sure. So yeah, back in my mind, terrified. Mm-hmm. Miranda and I also, before we had read, we had the conversation of, okay, maybe kids aren't for us. Um, and uh, whatever outside forces uh, deemed that was a lie. And we ended up red with red. Uh, so uh, red was a, a beautiful gift for, for us that we didn't know we, we needed. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, Waylon was also a beautiful gift that we didn't know that we needed. Um, I there's love a, their names, a, red. Thank Wayne. you. Yeah. Uh, and then Ramona was also a beautiful gift mm-hmm. that we didn't know we needed because we obviously for whatever reason i don't know we can't plan things it's just the universe is deemed if we we're too uh we don't we're not forceful enough so if we just went by our timeline it, we would never have kids so mm. i think the universe was just like here just take them all right now and uh so yeah i mean it's a it's an everyday thing of making sure that my kids have the diapers that they need and that uh Miranda is one of the strongest people I know. Um, I think beyond just finances, it's it it is hard. It's super hard to run a business and have so many little kids. Um, and uh, you know, by the end of the day, she's exhausted and I'm exhausted. Uh, I mean, I just talked to her on lunch and like Waylon was literally, he had a 15 minute meltdown and was just like sobbing, puffy face everywhere. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a lot more, not even just like financial stuff, which is always a big thing. But I think what I've learned a lot is just like the emotional side of it from yeah. a family thing is making sure that uh, when I am home and I am bad at it, um, but I'm trying to be better is when I am home, I'm home. And my family needs that. And I need to separate from the business. Because if I could, if I, if I need to, I will be business all the time, because I love what I do. And I'm so engulfed in it. And I just love coffee. And I love Sabbath. I love everything. Miranda loves it too. But what I have to do is when I get home, I have to start cutting everything out. Because what are your your tactics to to do that? It's (sighs) When it works, it's like I put my phone somewhere where I can never see it or hear it. Okay. Um, One big thing was I removed social media from my life for a very long time. I cut Instagram and then I I brought, I have a little secret Instagram that's kind of been tagged on some things, but uh, Facebook is gone. Miranda has really, she's always ran our social media, but there for a while when Ramona was born, I took it over. And it was just too much extra stress in my life. So she kind of like took it back. Mm-hmm. And that helps not being on my phone that much. Um, am I great at it? No, I'm very much addicted to the stupid mirror. Uh, <laughs> I hate it. Um, <laughs> so I think like that is just like being there for my family. I, I also think having the kids is actually great for our business because they love this place. And although they're not here all the time, when they're here, our staff loves them. You know, at least that's what they tell us. No, I'm just kidding. Like they, they just bring a little bit of the energy to the shop. The boys mm. are really fun and, and the customers love it. And uh, they like being around and, and they like, you know, red drinks is decaf, whole milk cappuccinos. Like that's, yeah. it's a lot of fun, you know? Cool. And um, so just like being conscious and trying to like wrap the family up in it. Um, mm. I think what really held us back was like one, we just, yeah, it, it, that, that aspect of how is it going to support the family for mm-hmm. sure. It's the biggest one. Um, but it like, sometimes what I've learned in life being 32, sometimes things work out and you don't know how. And if you just kind of just go and just like take a leap sometimes, and sometimes mm-hmm. there's a calculated leap, but sometimes it's not. And sometimes like that's the best thing you can do and things will work out. And I do think hard work pays off. I, I really do. I, I think hard work pays off. I think working hard is a, a good thing. I think it's a great thing. Um, I think beyond that, what really was for me, because um, coffee is like such an important thing to me, is like 
are people going to actually like what I'm making? You know, <laughs> we all like, think that. <laughs> are you going to like my coffee? Like, even you when like I send it, like, like getting wholesale, like, are you going to like my coffee? Like, Please? oh, cafe, how many samples do you need? Because will you like, will you like me enough to put me on your scro? Like, yeah. please. Um, so like, there's that aspect of it. And that's where we take an interesting approach, I think. Um, and I kind of said it from day one is like, we, I wanted Sabbath to kind of not reinvent the wheel, but be different. We have some really great roasters in the state. Like one thing that Michigan has, like is an overwhelming amount of actual roasters, you know, for as much specialty as there is. There's some really killer roasters, Anthology, Dessert Oasis, all the uh, Madcap, all these killer roasters. Yeah. And what I wanted was, I wanted us, especially when we first opened, to be like the gateway. One, we were doing drip. So it was like a, an approachable thing, right? Um, is my headphones going to die? It's fine. Um, it was an approachable thing. Um, and on the back of our bags, it says a cup for everyone. And we, yeah. I truly believe that. And especially when we first started and we're roasting, I was not roasting coffee that I would drink every day. Mm. Um, if I had my way, it would be like fruit bombs and bring out all the acid and just like smash you in the face and make your mouth water pucker. <laughs> but what I wanted was I wanted the people who are coming through the building to not be scared. And there's so yeah. many times, even yeah. in my own life, I go into a special specialty shop and I don't know what to do. The menus are <laughs> weird sometimes. I don't know sometimes how to, I'm a white kid. And sometimes I really struggle with just pronouncing normal English words I'm terrible at enunciating so I struggle with you know naming different regions of areas and I get really self-conscious about it I have dyslexia like I it's really oh. hard for me to read <laughs> menus sometimes under the pressure of specialty coffee and I wanted yeah. to slim that down a little bit yeah. and I wanted to roast coffee so like yeah I we opened up with this really killer natural guji from uh, Ethiopia I think it was a uh, Kenyan mountain Wow. And how I were how I would roast it, it was like a little more underdeveloped, like 17% development, you know, your traditional natural kind of get lots of that juicy fruity. When I was cupping it, I was reminding myself, like, not everyone is going to enjoy this. And this was going to be uh -huh. one of our main features yeah. of our lineup. So I had to put my mind in the customer's perspective. So what did I do? Guess what? I switched up the profile and I extended it a little bit. I took it like five degrees darker than what yeah. I would typically like. And right. it made it a little more body. It made it a, brought out a little more of the chocolate side of it, more of like the middle ground, non-offensive coffee, but you still got the fruits. You still got the floral. There just was not as acidic. It wasn't as, and what I mean by acidic is like that, that lemon acidity on your, your coat. Um, Do you feel but sorry to interrupt you but do you no, feel please. like as you're as you're you're roasting it you're paying that extra dollar for this you said it's a kenyan coffee right yeah freaking kenyan is not cheap no so like as a roaster and as a business person you know how much you paid for it you're like bro yeah. i want to just give you everything that this coffee yeah. has to offer and because i freaking paid for it <laughs> right but and so when you take it five degrees more do you do sure. you feel guilty or do you feel like bro i'm not i'm not even getting my money's worth should i just get a cheaper coffee so no that, like, not at all <laughs> like I, how do i deal with it as a roaster yeah i there's i think there's a time and place right mm -hmm. um like okay we have our pink for bone that yes. is how we 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 roasted that coffee how I, we won, we went through a hundred pounds of it to actually get the right profile of it. Wow. Like we spent a lot of time on it. And when I, when I sell a coffee that is more than $18 a bag, we spend time on everything. But what I mean, like there's a threshold. If yeah. I am going to charge someone $22 a bag or $23 a bag for a 12 ounce bag of coffee, mm -hmm. I need to make sure that it is stellar and it's worth the $25 because for me growing up mildly not high income um a $25 clip was a $25 clip like you could do a lot with 25 bucks and someone's gonna pick up a bag of coffee for that I want to make sure it's right and yeah. so with the pink for bone for example we roasted that how we thought it was going to be the best. And, and I still think all of our coffees even when we do like tone some things down and we did yeah. this a lot earlier on was we toned some aspects down. I still think that is like the best of that coffee. I don't think like 
just because I truly love a lemon acidity, what, what does that mean that that's the best that that coffee has to offer? When if I extend it, guess what? Maybe it just bought, brought up the body. Like, and sometimes it's ex, like very, very like um, an eye-opening experience is like taking that coffee somewhere I would never drink it and then saying, oh, I just learned something today. Maybe that actually did have a little more sugars. And sometimes we get so from me being coming from like the home, I didn't have a teacher. I, didn't, I taught, I'm self-taught everything, right? So it was reading Scott Rao. It was reading, you know, James Hoffman and like literally Scott Rao was the Bible. Well, guess what? <laughs> having Scott Rao as my Bible also made me super depressed because I was having crashes and flicks all over the place. And my coffee was trash because of crashes and flicks. Um, that's just Who not the case. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I thank Scott for everything he does. I still listen to him, but I actually now just like cut all of it out and I just do what the cup tells me to do. And mm -hmm. yeah, certain, certain times we may get like a Guatemala in and I'm like, Oh, it's so like a bomb up front on this one. I really, really would love this. But I also think for the majority of our customers, there's a strong percentage that a lot of them are actually just using a normal coffee pot and not just a V60. So we okay. try, or like a Chemex. So we try to get a roast pro profile that will also really, like if you, your grandma has a percolator at home, she could probably grab the pink for bone down there. And yeah. with a little bit of tweaking, she'd be okay at it. Like yeah. we, we just try to focus on everyone if they want to splurge, they splurge. If not, a lot of our other ones, like we have a coffee for everyone. I don't know. I, I just, I try not to like, it's worked for us. Um, but now in like, now we have like an established foothold. Yeah. Um, there's definitely coffees like looking for bone or this, like a, we have a Kenya right now in AB. Whereas like, now nah, we're going to roast it how Chris and I, really believe like this is this is the jam you know yeah. like yeah I could take it a little more in the caramel note but I think this is the jam and it works out and sometimes it doesn't work out but taste is subjective I could yes. taste berries and you could taste lemon and right. who knows right so okay cool well, that makes me feel good because I was having yeah. the same sort of um observations and feelings and I was like I know I love this type of coffee and I'm going to put yeah. it on my menu. Cool. But then for those who are like, say my parents who really just love freaking Brazil and I hate Brazil, yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't mean like, I'm not going to yuck yeah. their yum. Yep. If you find it yum. Cool. Like if I, and if I could provide that for you, that's what I should, should do. So yeah. I've changed up my menu and I have super floral stuff. I have, I'm working on more dark stuff even. Um, and I'm like, how am I going to judge a dog if I don't like dark? So I got to bring in people who like dark, right? Yep. Yep. That kind of thing. Okay, cool. So uh, yeah, that makes me feel loads better. Um, switching gears now. Any regrets or things that you wish you could have? Maybe not a regret. That's a strong word. But if you have yeah. a regret, I want to hear about it. And okay. if no regrets, um, what's, what's maybe one thing that you would want to go back and affect some kind of change? A regret. Um, based on the situation that you're in right now, which if you want to establish yeah. what that baseline is for us. Yeah, I mean, the situation we, we're in right now, we are a growing roastery and cafe. Um, uh, we roast just about 800 pounds or over eight. On a, any given week, we roast about just under or just over 800 pounds of coffee a week. Uh, sometimes that jumps up to like this past week was, let me just do 800 plus 1500 pounds this week. We had a pretty big order, um, that came in. Um, so that's kind of the perspective, um, uh, where, where we're at as far as regrets go. I don't know if I have any regrets. Um, because I think I've learned so much through all of the steps. I know this is like a, this is maybe a 
getting out of the answer. Um, okay, here's the regret. Don't Only stress. If it's true. Only if it's true. You know what I mean? Like, no, I'm I, I think, a word. no, I think this is totally true. And it's something that I've been really trying to like focus in a little bit more on is like not to stress. I, not to because stress. every, yeah, every, issue that arises with sabbath i take very very personal because it's mm. miranda and i's baby right so it's like into the world blah 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 but what i've been trying to like reinforce myself is like it, everything's okay it's all gonna work out like <laughs> oh the shop's out of half and half a few yeah. customers can go without half and half for a few minutes you don't have to freak out about it it's okay uh. like we're gonna be chill um and like one of the, because stress what it does is it 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 enables our mind and it for me it's like this biggest like um crippling notion in my brain and it causes me not to function as well um on top of being a dad with lack of sleep and everything uh and also trying to fit in some type of personal time so i stay up way too late um to begin with and wait i'm up way too early so there's no whatever so i'm not highly functioning all the time um, so I missed emails. I look, I missed a giant order that was supposed to go out last week. Like missed it. I just missed the email. Um, and that was the cause to stress about. But uh, we got like at the end of the day, it got all taken care of, right? Yeah. Um, so trying to focus on not the problem, but the instant solution of okay, I have the problem. Now, Trevor, don't go right to the problem that you always go to and like stress about the problem like eeyore go right to a solution try to be the solutioner before stressing too much because most of the time the solution is there you just have to focus for a half a second so i think a lot of my regrets are just yeah or just stressing too much about non-problems got it that's very very helpful Okay. Not being able to see the forest through the trees. Yeah. 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 Um, now you have a partner in this, this whole time. This is mm -hmm. not even on my list, but you mentioned the stress thing. So yeah. I would, would you classify yourself as the worrier, the stressor and your wife being more of like the anchor oh, yeah. and kind of like pulls yeah. you back? Okay. Oh yeah. A thousand okay. percent. A thousand percent. I worry about everything. Uh, I'm a big... I have to be liked all the time. I have to think people have to think I'm funny all the time. Uh, <laughs> I have to be like, I, I worry about everything. And uh, uh, my wife is very much the, the reins. She cools me down. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's chill. And I am not. Are you always, are you always open to receiving that? Like sometimes she calls it sometimes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a real yeah. answer. <laughs> Nor norm normally. Yes because yeah. Miranda is, she is this like quiet, calming presence that mm -hmm. um, whenever she's around, like nothing really phases her. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen her, I've watched her deliver three children now, nothing phases her. I mean, she's <laughs> as cool as a cucumber. Um, she is like literally the strongest human I know. And so when she tells me something, I really do try to reframe it, like reframe my mind Mm. Um, there's oftentimes I don't do it very well, but after the fact, it's like, Trevor, remember your wife is always right. Uh, like a thousand percent. Um, when she's like, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be fine. And I'm over here sweating bullets. Most mm. likely everything's going to be fine. That's so, cool. I see. Yeah. I, I'd like to think that I'm becoming that for my husband. So that's cool. Yeah. I'm going to share that's that little good. story with him. Do um, it. <laughs> um, okay. So as I'm sort of making that transition and I'm trying to put miles in and practice what it's going to be like to work in coffee. Like right now I do this, I'm sitting behind a computer, I'm meeting sure. clients, I'm doing admin and managing and marketing. So I've been trying to get my steps in, uh, as a home roaster and trying to envision what it's going to be like working in a, a coffee like environment. Um, mm what I want to prepare for is I think in every job, there's going to be stuff that you love and there's certainly stuff that you hate. What do you mm -hmm. love about your job now? And what do you hate? And I know hate's a strong word, but I mean, like, I'm sure there's something yeah. <laughs> or maybe I hate, 
I hate QuickBooks and I hate invoicing. <laughs> I hate, yeah, I hate them. I'm not good at admin. I yeah. am. I'm terrible at adminning. It's one of my weakest points. Um, I suck at admin. Uh, I am a hundred percent honest. I do too much adminning. If I could find another person to do it for me, I would, uh, maybe one day we'll, I'll have that luxury. I suck at it. I just, yeah. I lose stuff. I, because I am just a scatterbrain. I am, yeah. I am a jackrabbit. I am here one second and off on something else. <laughs> ADHD coming out of my face. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think the one thing that I love, there's lots of that I love, yeah. um, from the, from the roasting side of it. Mm -hmm. I love the struggle of trying to find the profile. Yeah. Um, and I get, I have a, I a Chris who's our, our uh, he does a lot of our production roast um, for us. Um, he's been in the game for a long time. Um, him and I have been friends for a while and him and I are always bouncing things off of each other. His perspective on roasting is a little different than mine, but we also have the same thought of like, throw the bean in the roaster. Let's see what the bean does. Don't do anything to it. Mm. Like we have a set charge. We roast. Um, I like watching your videos a lot because you really do. I think you do understand the actual, the schematic craft of ro roasting. <laughs> Yeah, no, you do. You really do. I, I, every coffee that I've tried, it's great. I, I have to say, like, you may look at I made it, but there was a time when you first started your YouTube channel yeah. that I was watching and I was envious that you were making great content and Mill City was reposting it all the time. And I didn't know how to use <laughs> YouTube. So, um, cause I'm a boomer. Um, <laughs> Well, I, I'm so older than you. You, you say you say like, oh well, you've made it. Well, there. Listen, I was a day one Black City Coffee person. I watched your vlogs all the way. I Thanks, think it. Bro. I think you yeah, do amazing, nice. amazing content. Um, but uh, you know, I think just like the struggle of trying to find that profile is sometimes is the most irritating thing. But it also reinstills the need to cup from a roaster's yes. perspective is cupping yeah. is everything you mm -hmm. got to make time for it I don't have we're like just now getting really good cupping protocol and we've yeah. kind of been like we've been so on fire that it's like Chris and I one of our big things is like we got to figure out a really strict cupping protocol and now we just mm -hmm. got it and we're like nailing it we're very it's like that makes me happy is when I'm cupping at a table. That's great. Um, uh, yeah. I think from the cafe side of it, I just love, I love being with people and mm. I love meeting new people. I love hearing when someone takes a sip of their latte or takes a, we make everything in house. We even make our chocolate in house. It's like, like, we, like, I love when people take a sip and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so good. And yeah. you like visibly see, or maybe they don't even say anything at all, but they take that first sip and it's just like, you can tell, all right, that did something for their morning. Like that makes me happy. <laughs> I, I do have a servant's heart. I do like to serve people, even if it's like at the cost of my well being. Um, and I, I will, I love it. I love is that your love language? Active it, service? It is, uh no it's not my love <laughs> language um but it's definitely something i i value and i yeah. i think servitude is like a really good thing and uh sure, yeah. i love opening the shop and seeing a few stragglers at 7 a.m and just you have that talk back and forth you know their names you know the coffee that they're gonna get they don't switch it up and then when they do switch it up you're like wait this is awkward i already made this for you and they're like ah don't worry <laughs> about it you know um, so I like that. I like the banter. I like the noises, you know, all of that. Hmm. That's cool. Okay. Next one. Um, so I'm trying to, I always feel like I'm, I'm trying to find a priority in what I'm doing. I'm like, oh, I should focus on this to get to this next step. Yeah. Um, what, from your observation, I know you don't know the whole operation over here, but I'm I'm basically at home. Okay. Yeah. So what is there. the what should I focus on right now versus now like like what are you focusing on in your as a cafe owner and roastery owner? Um, I focus on too much. 
so everything comes out of focus. <laughs> um, I would say right now, you know, you're progressing up the ladder. Yeah. Instill some type of very good inventory program uh. for yourself right now and l- make it work. Like yeah, before you get to the next step, like have your green inventory dialed in to where okay. like, you know exactly what you have in house. And if it's you roast not. excellent, you get a couple of batches coming in. I know like I have a three day turnaround to get greens here. I would say some of the sh- most stressful times is it's all unpredictable, right? We're a growing business. So we may get a brand new account in and all of a sudden they're like, yeah, I need, they, cause they don't know. You try to advise them. You're like, you are going to need 40 pounds of coffee. No way. Yeah. You're going to need 40 pounds of coffee or you're going to be calling me at the end of the week. Cause mm-hmm. we don't do minimums. I don't do minimums, whatever you need. And sure enough, they need 40, 50 pounds of coffee and they only put in 20 at the beginning of the week. Yeah. So there's like this, you can predict things, predict. but then there's always the unpredictable. So like knowing, I know when I order my beans from Cafe Imports and I call my importer, who is a dear friend of mine now, and I'm like, ah, I need it shipped out. And I better have the call in before noon or I'm in trouble. Yeah. Um, I know it's a two day turnaround. I know it's two days unless there's bad weather. Turnaround so time. it's like okay. figure out some type of great green inventory so you're not screaming especially if you're using like a blend, like our ritual, which is like, that is the foundation of our, our business. The ritual blend Mm. has become like, it's life of its own, excuse me. And it's like, it's constantly ordering coffee for that thing because we just go through so much and I don't have a lot of places to put it. So um, it's like, I'm ordering a pallet, two pallets at a time. It's an old storage Oh, you can't like stockpile. No, I have no room to stockpile. I'll That's send you why some you're pictures. looking for a, yeah, <laughs> a warehouse. Yeah. Oh, I, I would have love nowhere, to see that. Yeah, please. I have nowhere to stockpile anything. Um, <laughs> it's We just like organized everything and I bought a bunch of these baker bins. Um, and I'll send you pictures of them. And we literally go bag to bin because we can't fit like the big 100 gallon brute trash bags you see yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So we found these baker bins and they hold like a uh, hundred pounds of flour, which we then volumized. Um, and we did like a quick little gist. If we got a 27 gallon, it would hold 160 pounds of beans. So like one Columbia bag. And we're like, okay. Oh. So I ordered like 10 of these things. And <laughs> now I don't have a pallet in my floor. It's more organized. And we literally, cause we go through the green so fast, yeah. pulling them out of the this green safe isn't like a big major deal. There's also yeah. a lid on top of it. It's all food safe right. and they're on wheels so I can move them around and they're yeah. really great. Um, yeah, green inventory is a struggle. You'll never have the space that you think you need. That's for sure. Just being really? creative. Okay, green inventory. And do you keep yeah. that in like a um, an AC controlled place? Yeah, our you little storage unit stuff? is, yeah, our AC, uh, well, so yeah, the little storage unit we have is, uh, you know, it's controlled. So yeah. there's like not really high fluctuating temps or anything. Um, and typically like I'll do inventory of our greens. And when I have to bring a bag over, I bring it over the day before just mm-hmm. so it can kind of settle into temp. Um, as long as once again, nothing goes crazy. We just make sure that we try to have everything there the day, uh, you know, 48 hours before. So like the greens are definitely into the room temperature type of a thing. Wow. Okay. So I don't see too many crazy things. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Wow. So logistics. Yeah. Okay. Um, logistics is a big thing. Logistics. Okay. Star. I bet I know that's an issue for me because I'm such a like you are like a jackrabbit, just like scatterbrain. I'm like, well, this is what needs to be done right now, and I'm like a terrible yeah. uh, inventory person. What um, what do you guys do? We use Roaster Tools, which is a software. It's like oh, an online that. database. Yeah, yeah, it's expensive. Um, okay. It's okay. It handles all of our invoicing too. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. I, there's a small team. Okay. It does things well and it does things not well. I have a Google um, Sheet. I mean. <laughs> look, a Google Sheet's great. It's great. <laughs> So oh, yeah. uh, sometimes that's what I want to go back to, but yeah. we're too <laughs> thick in the woods right now. Okay, so you have a cafe business 
and a roastery business. Mm -hmm. And like I said, mm -hmm. like I've, I've heard before and I've seen before, like it's two separate things. Yeah. You took on both. Yeah. Um, do you, do you have any qualms about that or you're good with that? No. You're good to go? Do you prefer one or the other? I mean, I think wholesale is easier um, from the, not from getting accounts. Getting accounts is hard. Mm. Uh, like, Having a cafe, because think of, think of it if you were running that cafe and you've used X bean for so long and you're, unless you're like a fast rotating multi roaster, right? Mm -hmm. You've used this bean for so long, your customers are used to this, you're making revenue off of it. And along comes this new guy. Yeah, the coffee is really good, but are you willing to change up your whole dynamic structure? Sometimes like it takes months to close an account, yeah. which I didn't expect. I didn't expect. And um, that's something. I, you know, I think what has helped us is we've gotten into markets like grocery stores oh, and that cool. has been a big thing. You find your little, like your cool, cool grocery stores that focus on, that want to focus on local products yeah. um, that want to, to have like a specialty, um, like grade product in their store that they're willing to promote. Um, okay. Well, whatever. Uh, we'll talk <laughs> like this. Uh, my AirPods died. So. Okay. No problem. <laughs> um, yeah, so markets have helped us a lot. Yeah. Uh, we're in a lot of like local grocery stores. And then we got into a couple of like local chain grocery stores. They have like five locations that okay. are kind of things. And then we got into like a couple of these like fancier markets that were owned by bigger conglomerates, which then we were doing pretty well in. Yeah. And then from there, they like, were like, yeah, we want to bring you on. And we, they brought us into 77 stores across the state, which that, that was a radical thing. That's the first dope. that came in for that was 1600 pounds. Wow. So That's that was so like, cool. it was very cool. It was one of those, one of those <laughs> moments where it was like, I couldn't see the forest through the trees, right? Yeah. I was trying to make everything perfect. And it took me about a week to be like, oh, shoot. We just roasted like 1,700 pounds, <laughs> like, cool. and we're not even a year old. Like, that's awesome. That so, is awesome. You know, I, I think markets are critical for mm. like markets, you know, to get your wholesale going. The more that you can start building up and like showing markets doing well, I think yeah. it builds brand loyalty. Like customers mm. are going into the store, they're going to buy that. And then maybe, yeah. hey, they'll go to their cafe that they go to and they'll be like, hey, have you guys tried Black City? Because you should, you should put that on drip. You, know, you should yeah. put that on your spro. You know, almost have you, like those people that are buying at the grocery store will then start doing work for you, you know? Whoa. Yeah. So out yeah. there. Okay. Um, that's so cool. Uh, okay. I have like 15 minutes. I have some questions from Kevin. Maybe we can like rapid fire. Okay. Okay, rapid fire. Um, where do you get your beans and how frequently do you place an order for more supply? <laughs> uh, cafe we, imports, you said, right? <laughs> yeah, we really only use cafe imports. Uh, okay. at, at the beginning, I've, I used a couple um, other places, but um, honestly, I've developed such a good relationship with our rep over there. He doesn't want me to give his name because he's- okay silly but uh <laughs> he's awesome he's become yeah. a really good friend of mine and we send <laughs> memes to each other all day long yeah. um super I, I think if you can find i don't know if it's like this with everything but i've developed such a good relationship with him yeah um he does a lot of work for me and yeah. he'll just be like hey you're getting low on this coffee that you contracted you should probably think of a replacement and I'm like, oh, oh wow that's nice so like he'll help me out or you know uh, the first time we got an anaerobic was yeah. I messaged him. I was like, Hey, do you guys have anything crazy? And I want to, I want to go funky. And he was like, no, <laughs> I don't. It's gone. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And then like literally four hours later, he calls me. He's like, Hey, just so you know, someone freed up this bag, uh, two yeah. bags, of, like this anaerobic Columbia, you should probably buy it. Uh, and I was like, call him back. I'm like, yeah, let's buy it. So, yeah. you know, it was, we have a good relationship. I order from cafe imports. We might order from some other places here and there, but right now I have coffees contracted for the rest of the year. Nice. Um, and then um, I order 
depending on i mean this is like give and take but every other week for sure most likely uh, every other week every other week it seems like it especially lately he may watch this and message me and be like that's a lie but um <laughs> sometimes like last week i ordered and then the week before i ordered so it, i had to do a double order which that hurt um yeah you know there's sometimes volume it just things spike maybe your kenya's moving slow and then all of a sudden wham kenya pops off and you're left like oh crap if i don't order some bags that's where the know. you said the predicting comes in how predicting you know, is everything if you can I try to figure that out the pattern okay yeah. how often do you make new blends yeah. uh, or offer new types of beans from different origins no that's a good question like how is do it, you decide that great Great call, uh, question. Uh, we only have one blend right now, and that's Ritual. We mm -hmm. had that at launch. I yeah. knew I wanted to have a blend on espresso, yeah. Um, and I wanted to make a blend that was approachable for everyone. And I wanted it to be like we tell. It, it's kind of like my thing. Hey, if your grandma grabs that bag, she'll like it. And that's like it's true. My grandma likes it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's sixty percent Ethiopia, a seasonal. So we started. It was a Guji. It's a Yerga Chef now. It's going to split back to a Guji right now. Mm -hmm. um and then 40 percent guatemala huevo tarango um it's like it's a good regional Classic. select yeah. um so it's got a lot of like that caramel base with it some praline and then it's got some nice like soft berry floral from the yoga chef and it's really fun it mixes really well and it's like for milk drinks because that's right. a big thing right when you're making yeah. espresso sure i wanted to taste killer as espresso but most people are putting milk into it so right. how do I make sure that it tastes good with milk? So. Got it. Um, how many origins or beans do you guys offer and which yeah. one is your favorite and why? So Ritual, we are working on another blend right now, but it's top secret and I'm excited for it. Um, so Ritual is one. We typically run in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we have a natural process chichele. We're going to offer a washed uh oh, which one i have like three in my head uh salimo uh that is very fun it tastes kind of like a grape candy um and then we have a kenya ab uh from marunga which is very citrus and very tasty i really love that coffee and it's so good sad when it goes um we have we're running just ran out of a mexico that was really fun yeah. Uh, from the Sesmich bio, uh, that word I'm forgetting, biosphere um, co-op. And then we have a pink for bone, which currently between that and the Salimo, those are like my favorites, I think right well, now. Yeah, the pink for bone is really good. It's really fun. And then we have our decaf, which is a, a sugar cane decaf. From I love the sugar cane decaf. Love it. I, yeah. I think customers freak out about it because it tastes so different than any decaf they've ever had right you sell a lot of decaf actually. i like that moment too and i when they're yes. like huh <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm like yeah <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> uh, okay i love this question how long did it take for you guys to feel established as a roaster part of me says we're still not established yeah, but I feel like I'm always going to say that. That's the underdog in me. That's like the yeah. person that I've never really felt like people have taken me serious my whole life. So I'm just going to mm. beat people senseless until they recognize me. Um, I always, <laughs> I keep like the, I keep an underdog mentality a lot. It's, yeah. I've always kind of been that way. I. Well, you're, de you're definitely like, uh, I think it's a, it's a nicer word. It's like humble. You're so humble. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, no one's ever called me humble before. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I, I think probably when, when I felt like the most established is uh, going into a Meyer, which was the 77 store chain, which is mm -hmm. in Michigan, Meyer is like, that is a thing. That is a oh. big grocery store. Um, everyone knows what a Meyer is. We call yeah. it Meyers. Because Myers. in Michigan, we pluralize everything. We're going oh, to Barnes and Nobles. You're one of those. Nobles, Kroger's. <laughs> we're going to the ball games. Like we just, that's what we do in Midwestern life. Um, going oh, in to my local Meyer store, going to the coffee aisle and looking there and seeing our bags there. That was like, 
and that's like cool. brand kids there. That was cool. That's cool. Oh yeah, that would be that would be. So, I mean, I always go there like to the uh, to the Whole Foods, and I'm seeing all the the brands, and I'm like, yeah. If this guy's here, I was like, I could make it here. You could totally make it there. <laughs> we haven't made it into Whole Foods yet, so <laughs> it's hard. Tough, I, I they're a hard so. process to get yeah, through. Yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of hoops. Okay, two more. Mm-hmm. Um, what are several key factors to pay attention to prior to expanding your business? as a coffee roaster slash cafe inventory <laughs> inventory yeah we got that um work with an importer that you can contract coffees out and if your importer hasn't talked to you about contracting uh-huh. like start that um it wasn't until like i was able to start contracting things that i felt like a little more in control what, what does that mean that i have so i have I can, at least with like cafe imports this is a pretty common thing but uh-huh. like Okay, I cup five different coffees. I choose one that I like. I then they have like a hundred bags in stock. I can't buy X and I think of like how long I want this coffee to run for uh-huh. and like how much I would use. But just say I want to contract 20 of those bags. So what will happen is I'll draw up a contract with Cafe Imports. I'm gonna buy 20 of those bags of coffee, but you're gonna store them at your facility for uh-huh. until May. And I'm going to run through all 20 of those bags. And if not, then I got to restructure and the price goes up a little bit. So mm-hmm. there's like a little percentage added on to every month because I can't store it. Uh, but, um, but I know I have 20 of those bags sitting there and my customers know. So like, especially early on, I didn't know about contracting. I was picking scraps up. Well, I'm like left and right. We were rotating coffees like almost every two weeks. We had a different, different region on in origin. Yeah. And people kind of got into this feeling of like, like almost like oh, when I, I just started liking that coffee. Oh my God. And then oh. one day I was talking to my importer and he's like, we got to start contracting you like that. This is the next step to where you are, right? Mm-hmm. You're moving some coffee. Look at your numbers. You're, you're doing pretty well. Let's start contracting you off of these numbers. Okay. So then I was like, oh, interesting. What does that look like? And then it was like, okay, well pick out these. And then how many bags do you think you're going to need? Oh, cool you'll store them yeah so like right now i think he just sent me a message i have like 210 bags on contract with cafe imports and most likely those will get gone through before summer sometime so that just gives you like peace of mind that you know you have inventory coming in you don't have to store it and there's a little bit extra cost for that yeah yeah got it cool trevor i want to thank you for your time it's been i'm like kind of kind of overwhelmed with all the stuff that I have to look forward to <laughs> but at the same time I'm like because you I'm said like try. don't don't stress about it yeah. it's just like okay like here here are all the things and then don't 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 also choose that other thing to like put stress on you to like try to figure shit out like yeah okay one one thing at a time one thing at a time um so this chat has been like super inspiring and I hope super inspiring for others who are wanting to do the same thing. And, and a lot of like our audience who are, where I'm going to put this on on YouTube, they're like, they're trying to do the same thing or just trying to just see what it's going to take. Cause it's, it's kind of a mystery when you start getting into the logistic part of it. There's yeah. the part that everybody sees, which is like, how do I roast this thing? <laughs> and there's that. Yeah. Um, and now I'm learning where I can really make it my own. And I, there isn't this crazy Bible that I have to be, that I have to answer to every day and, and feel yeah. judged all the time for, yeah. which is nice. Cause like, you know, the Catholic in me is like, Oh, <laughs> 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 you know, like, Oh no, the, the line is going up. Like, Oh no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so that's, it's really nice. It's reassuring um and definitely very inspiring so what's next for you Mm. if you can share that and where can people find out more about sabbath coffee roasters yeah next for me is i'm going over to our storage unit and i'm going to saran wrap a bunch of pallets that are going to get shipped out tomorrow like literally and then i'm going to go to some random person's house and pick up a kitchen table that we got off of facebook marketplace and i'm going to go home I'm going to hopefully kiss my kids goodnight before they go to bed. 
<laughs> uh, but beyond that, um, you know, we're just roasting coffee. We're just trying to do something <clears throat> fun and a little different. Um, you know, your YouTube content as well as some other people's have inspired me and we, we've been dabbling with YouTube, but we have to do it different because whatever. So it just involves like, we're making jackass brewing content, I think <laughs> like jackass coffee brewing technique. Yeah. I don't know. It's just me getting hurt the whole time, which is yeah. Fine. You uh, know, I was, I was so interested, like hearing like your just your story, and that's kind of like what brought this interview on. Because I was like, well, if Trevor's gonna go the the silly fun route, I better come yeah. in there with you. That's all. I don't. I don't take myself seriously at all. Yeah. I uh, I'm honored that you were interested in our story. I think For you sure. make uh, incredible content. Keep it up. I think. The, there's never been a better time for people who are just trying to learn how to roast than there is right now. There's so much great content out there and people who are really like yourself, you are extremely knowledgeable. You present it very well. And um, you're also just like growing and you're like kind of like showing your journey. Um, you're not afraid to like show it off. Um, I think Miranda and I we wish there would have been stuff like this when we first started off. So continue <laughs> it up, keep going. Uh, you know, if I can give one overwhelming piece of advice, oh, is, um, take everything in stride and be okay with growing into whatever it is. Don't make the big leap first. Mm. What I mean, like, don't, like, I, I think you have this incredible base growing, keep growing it. Don't make like this giant leap, make the good leap. Don't like, you'll Take know on too much. Yeah. You'll know <laughs> there's like this gut feeling. You will know it. And when oh. it comes, the door comes, you will know which one to go through. And, you know, hopefully we went through the right one and we'll still be here five years from now. If not, it is going to be the most wild crash and burn fun three years of my life. Um, and that's cool. That's cool. We gave it a shot and we're really excited about it. And so far the shot has hit. Who knows what tomorrow brings, you know? I love that. That That's cool, even though it's going to, if, it's not yeah. saying, you know, like, you know, you. and that's the fear that I think is like, in us and I think in a lot of people is like dude what if it doesn't work out but at least you well, gave it a shot yeah and I think oh, that's wow. so it important to, to say yeah but it is I think I think things can work out if you can be and okay if you want them to them. <laughs> if you want them to yeah yeah, yeah. it just it's a lot of work a lot where of can where can people find you, Trevor? Online and and shout out the cafe. Too. Yeah, uh, www.sabbathcoffeeroasters.com is our website. We you can order stuff for there. We got merch, whatever. Uh, content wise, Sabbath Coffee Roaster at Instagram. We don't have the the actual handle. Someone else has it, even though we have whatever. Um, <laughs> so we're on Facebook. Uh, you can find our YouTube channel. We do have a Sabbath coffee roasters, YouTube channel. It's fun. It's whatever. I don't know. It's whatever. So that's where we are. Awesome. Thank you so much, Trevor. You're welcome. Thank you for spending time with me and we will see you guys later. Okay. Cool.